Hi everybody, this is John Ferguson from Deep Wave Digital, and today I'm going to walk you through our Hello World script for uh, getting started with the AirT. Um, so what this script does at a high level is it's going. We're going to have some settings here that we that we set for the radio. Um, then we're going to open up some streaming and some buffers and read some data from the RF front end on the AirT and that will transfer the data over to the Tegra. Um, that Tegra then uh, will plot the data using matplotlib. Um, so we'll plot the time domain and the frequency domain. So let's jump in. So looking at the top, we have to import some packages. Uh, we have to import numpy. We have to import matplotlib for plotting. And then a few SOPI SDR um, libraries. So SOPI SDR is the uh, driver that allows you to communicate with uh, the ART. Um, so after we import our packages, then we need to create our, our settings. Um, so uh, it's a little confusing because RX1 is channel 0 and RX2 is channel 1. That's just because it's the SOPI convention is to go from 0 to 1. So since we want to receive on RX1, we set RX chan to 0. Uh, we then define how many samples we want to read. In this simple tutorial, we're just going to uh, read a real quick 2048 samples and then close the connection to the radio. Um, the sample rate is going to be set to 125 mega samples per second. And the frequency is going to be 2.4 gigahertz. So that's the LO frequency. The frequency of the tone that we will be sending into the ART is actually uh, 2. 4055 gigahertz. Um, next we need to set up the gain stages. So um, we're going to use the auto gain controller AGC in this tutorial. Um, if you did not want to use the AGC then you would just simply set this to false and you would just need to be a little bit more careful about what the power level you send into the RF front end is. Um, you want to try to not really go much higher than uh, minus 20 to minus 15 dBm. Um, so then we set our timeout, uh, and then the number of bits from the ADC. Uh, so on the ART, the ADC is 16 bits, and I'm just going to use that number so that I can normalize the amplitude and allow me to plot everything in full scale. Okay, so once we have all of these defined, then we can start receiving signal data. So the first thing we need to do is initialize the ART to receive. Um, and so we do that by calling SOPI SDR device and we feed it a dict with the deep wave digital driver for the ART. So that's called SOPI ART. Uh, next we need to set our sample rate. We set our sample rate to the value that we assigned up here. We need to set our gain mode. Uh, we're using AGC as defined up here. If you were using a manual gain mode, you would set this to false and then you could um, set the gain value as well. Um, and then we're setting our uh, frequency of the LO to be the same value up here, so 2.4 gigahertz. Um, then, so this, this allows all of the settings to be set on the ART's radio. Uh, and then we need to have somewhere to stream the data to. So we create a buffer. Um, that buffer uh, is going to be of type int16. So the data coming off of the ART is interweaved shorts, um, interweaved complex shorts. Um, so each value uh, is, is two bytes. Um, and so because the data coming off is interweave complex data, if you want 2048 complex samples, you actually need a buffer that is two times that big. So 4096 will be the buffer size. Um, then we're going to set up the data stream. So you call sdr.setupstream and you pass it your two um, values from your library that you imported up here. Uh, and then you need to pass it which channels you want to use. And note that this is a list. Even if it's just one value, it still needs to be a list. If you want to open up the stream to both channels, you would put a comma on uh, the next channel there. And then we're going to activate the stream. So at this point in the script, we are now starting to stream data. Uh, then we need to read the data. Um, so we read the data by calling sdr.readStream. Um, and then uh, we, we pass it the Rx stream that we defined up here. And then again, the buffer needs to be uh, a list. It needs to be a Python list. If you had two streams that you were reading, this would be a, uh, a, a two-dimensional list. 
our list with two values in it. Um, and then the, samples, the number of samples we're reading, which is 2048, uh, and then our timeout parameter. The output, uh, so this is, this is what you call to read the data to the buffer. The output of that gives you some status. Um, if, that, if, if this status um, dict is, if the RET value of that is equal to n, then that means that it functioned properly. Um, so what we do down here is we assert that that is the case, and if it didn't, then this value is actually the error code. Um, and so we'll, we'll put that on the screen if there was, in fact, an error. Um, so assuming that we pass all that, we read it properly. Uh, we're just going to read that one uh, buffer. We're just going to read one set of 2048 complex samples, and then we're going to deactivate the stream and then close everything down. Um, so at this point, the radio is off, uh, and uh, we'll plot the data. Okay, so looking at the next block where we're plotting the signal. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the, the data from the buffer and we're going to turn it from interweave um, shorts to complex float32 uh, numpy arrays. Um, so the first thing we do is we take that Rx buffer that we defined up here uh, and we convert it to type float, uh, but this is still interweaved. Um, but we're going to, at this point, we're going to normalize it uh, by the full scale of the A to D. Um, and then we're going to deinterweave it. And so um, we're going to define our signal as S, and it's going to be the uh, odd samples are the real part, and the even samples are the complex part because it is interweaved. Um, so now we have our signal in a vector format that uh, NumPy can understand. Um, and we're going to also FFT that. So we use NumPy's FFT package. Um, so we perform our FFT here. We, we normalize by the number of samples. And then we are going to uh, do our FFT shift so that it's plotted in a, in a way that is easier for us to read. Um, then the first thing we'll do is plot the, the time domain. Um, so we define our time array uh, in microseconds. And then we plot the real and imaginary parts separately, define our axes and define our axial labels. And then in the frequency domain, we're gonna plot that as well. So the first thing we do is we define our frequency, our x-axis values. Um, and so that goes from minus fs over two to fs over two. Um, and then we, um, we offset that by the LO frequency just so we're plotting in what the actual RF frequency was. And then we're gonna put that in, in gigahertz. Um, and then down here, we'll plot that in gigahertz versus the uh, uh, the power level in decibels. Uh, and then we'll define our axes and everything and we'll show the plot. All right, so let's execute it. So uh, on the RT, I am going to do a dot slash hello world and we should be able to run that. And you see we have a pretty good looking signal down here. Um, so over here, uh, the, this y-axis is the normalized amplitude, so this will go between 0 and 1. We're feeding in about a minus 30 dBm signal. Um, and so you see we're not quite at full scale. Full scale would be minus 1 to 1. Um, and then our, our uh, frequency domains down here. Um, so we were supposed to uh, be re receiving a signal at 2.4055 gigahertz, and you see uh, down here on the bottom right, the ticker says that is pretty much exactly where it's at. Um, you see that the uh, latest ADI chip, the 9371, does a great job at suppressing the LO frequency. Uh, and it also does a great job at suppressing the, um, you, you know, the quadrature error correction does a great job there. You, you don't see your image here. Um, so this is a great example of um, how the radio looks. Uh, we can then zoom in. Um, if we want to look at the frequency peak a little bit better, you see we have a nice peak there. We can um, reset that. Um, and we can zoom into the time domain and see that we have a very nice looking complex sine wave there. Uh, so that's all I have for you today. Um, I hope Hopefully this can help you get started and you can uh, use this as the baseline for writing much more complex code to do some really cool stuff with the ART. Um, so keep following us and we'll keep posting some uh, tutorials to help you get going.